What's up, everyone? I think everything's working properly, I think. I hope. We'll see. Anyways, hi. If you're new here, what's up? I'm Erica. I'm part of Artist Till Death. My husband is off running errands, and the director is taking a nap. But um, we go live every day at 6 p.m. Central, except for on Tuesdays, it's at 2 p.m. Central. And we always do some sort of art. It's usually resin, not always, but often. And today is a resin day. I had a request yesterday to um, do, what's up, Brittany? To do a purple and teal or turquoise and blue ocean. And so I will be doing that today. I'm using the super um, super cure super cure I always want to make it say a coat because it's kind of what stone coat does everything is a coat and this one is a super cure so I always get it mixed up um, if you don't know anything about this epoxy the stone coat super cure it is a one-to-one -one epoxy and it is very thick I did not preheat it because when you do that, you kind of risk some of your working time. <clears throat> in here lately, I have gotten kicked in the teeth by resin, um, curing up too soon on me. I guess I get a little chatty and forget what I'm doing, and it ends up curing, and I have to throw a piece away, so I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to try to remember that I'm using Speed Cure. This has a working time of about 20 minutes. That's from when you put the two parts together and start mixing, not when you start working on the piece. So keep that in mind if you try to use this. It is um, marketed not as a beginner's epoxy because you do have to kind of know how to work with resin before giving it a shot because it it does not play around when it starts to cure. It is going to cure the end. Um, what's up, Donna, Brittany, Chrissy, Margo, Cindy, Bonnie, Ghost Gaming, hello. I am using one of our handy dandy patent is no longer pending uh, stir sticks for this because um, it's not porous like a stir stick. Um, like a popsicle stick so it will not mix in as many bubbles and you can wipe it off and reuse it over and over and over unless you get really rough with your mixing and you break them it should last you for a while Karma Cat, how have you been? Where have you been? I always love seeing your beautiful faces after a hiatus, like catching up with all the fans. All right, the boring part's almost done, which is mixing this epoxy. It's taking me a bit longer than it usually does because I usually have it mixing with my stand mixer, but this epoxy is too thick for that. But it's a really nice epoxy. There's no smell to it, of course, unless you burn it or scorch it. That could give you some issues. <sighs> I hate this part. Your mom watches my videos? Well, I'm so glad. Please tell her thank you for me. So your mom does a lot of resin artwork? A rough year, oh, that's no good. But I'm glad you're doing better, and I'm glad you're back. So the colors that we're gonna use today, I'm using Aubergine, Aber, Aber, mm, not good at this name, eggplant, but it's called Aubergine. It's by Color Fashion. 
I'm using the turquoise gel tint like we did yesterday. Top cell white from Color Passion. Um, I'm using Lorraine Shimmer from Color Passion for the mid-tone blue. And I'm using a little bit of Oyster and a little bit of this pink um, Mica. I'm going to try the sand thing again. See if we like it or if yesterday was just a fluke. And I'm going to be doing resin on this existing ocean. A lot of times when I have pieces that just don't sell for however long, um, then I paint over over them. But I never like to completely cover my pieces. I like to have a little bit of that showing, so I'll probably mix in a little bit extra of the turquoise so that you can see some of this under layer through it. Burning calories, right? Oh, okay. Well, I hope she's having a good nap. Okay. I'm going to say that I hope that that was enough minutes of stirring. So we're going to need the aubergine. I think I just said it right. Someone mark it on a calendar. Turquoise, a Lorraine, and not a whole, whole lot for the sand. So I'm just going to going to need the white. And I'm going to put some of this interference oyster in there. I want it to be kind of a pink sand, but also still have that gold. So I'm going to put some interference oyster. The pink has a little bit of a gold sheen to it, but I want to kind of tone down the level of pink. So I'm putting oyster in there. I think a lot of times people forget that they can mix their epoxy colors and make your own hybrid colors which a lot of times are even more amazing than the original colors that you put in there. So that's a lot of mica. It's still a little bit pinker than I would have wanted so if I have any resin left over I'm going to dull this down a bit. It's a little bit, a little bit loud but I like that platinum sheen it has. Okay, <clears throat> I think my allergies are acting up, so I'm sorry if I sound a little bit froggy. And I need a cup for the white. So I only pour, oh goodness, focus. I'm confused. why it's not focusing. If it's not one thing, it's another. Okay. It's an easy fix. put um, as much resin in a cup that as I'm going to need of that color. A lot of people will put their pigments in their mixing cup first. I like to put my resin in first because then I can gauge how much pigment I'm going to need for the amount um, of color I need of that specific color. Granted, um, we could do the same thing just in reverse with the um, pigment being in there first, but I don't know. So um, this color scheme was requested, and I hope I do the requester, requestee, requester proud because working outside of my comfort zone, doing so many opaques in an ocean. It's typically really, really transparent for me anyways. All right, so this is the Top Cell White by Color Passion. It is a very bright 
I was not going to focus because I turned out autofocus off, but it's a very nice bright white and it has no sparkle to it. It's flat, which is exactly what I want. And then we're going to do we're going to do some aubergine. I think that is twice that I've said it properly. My mom wants a golden leaf square table. Please, can you do that? Um, yeah, I can. Just a gold leaf table. That's it. Okay, Aberdeen is like a deep, well, eggplant, plummy, type of color. I'm going to show you in this camera it may be more accurate. It looks a little bit looks a little bit dark in this camera, but it's got a very warm purple to it. It does it looks a little bit deep on camera. It's a very nice color. And now I'm going to do Actually, I need to go ahead and pour out my line of clear. This is going to separate my wave from the colored resin so that my wave doesn't go from a nice white color to like a baby blue color. Okay, I get a lot of this request um, or comments about what to do when your pace go hard and essentially they're fine they just seize up sometimes and the fix is super easy you just hit it with a little bit of heat and it'll liquefy and you can mix it super easy just don't burn yourself doing this the safest method would be to close the lid really tight and put it in a hot water bath for like 10 minutes and you should only have to do this one time. I would melt the entire thing for you to show you how little time it actually takes, but I'm on, a, I'm on the clock. So I'm just making sure I'm taking only the liquefied bits. I don't want any chunks, even though they'll probably still melt into the resin just fine. So the Lorraine Shimmer is a metallic, lighter blue shade. I love how it kind of glows almost. And then the last one is going to be the Turquoise Gel Tint. She is getting a different um, container. So it's not going to be these little squeezy bottles anymore, which is fine because they're a little bit hard to squeeze sometimes. Uh, yes, it is on high heat. What's up, cat? Hey, Tim. You put yours in a Ziploc bag? I mean, that's the safest way to do it. If you're not on a time crunch. This is actually a really pretty aqua color. I don't know why my overhead camera is looking so moody. Okay, so we're not going to do the sand first. We're going to do that last. We're going to go in first with our turquoise gel tint. This is from Color Passion. And I'm going to make sure that that is in the areas where I really like the, the waves that I have on the first layer because this is going to be the only clear pigment that's in this layer. So I want to make sure that you can see my favorite parts through to the second layer. So to do that, I have to have the clear or translucent or transparent resin in that area. Meow. Let's put the light blue down. 
This is the Lorraine. I know it doesn't look like much right now. Probably there's someone sitting at home cursing me that I've ruined perfectly good pour for this, but just trust the process. There's a method to the madness. Now we'll put in the aubergine. I'm hoping that this color works well in this piece. It is the one of the darker purples that I had at my disposal. But I'm gonna put a little bit of some dark in some other areas because there could be little dark deep spots there too. And like I did on the last one, I'm going to put some of the sand color right under where my wave is going to be. So maybe a couple streaks out here. Who knows? Could look amazing, could look horrible. We'll find out together. So far, the resin hasn't gotten really hot on me, so that's a good sign. Thank you, Bonnie. I have a JR Pearl White that gets hard every time. I always melt it and it works, but I wonder if it's normal to do that every time. There are some pastes that I've had that that's been the case where I had to do it a few times. Um, I don't know why some of them do that and why some of them don't. It's unfortunate, but the paste still worked the same. I wish I had just a solution though, because I know it's frustrating when you're in the middle of a pour and you check your colors and one of them seized up. It's not, not a fun time. So right now I'm just making sure there's no raw areas where it's just canvas or um, like it's dry spots. I want everything to be filled in because if you don't then your wave is going to kind of skip in those areas you don't want it to skip i'm not mixing the colors together i'm just running my hand ever so gently across the surface And in a second, I'm going to brighten those colors up because it's way too dark. I'm going to try to bring some of these light blues down. I'm going to do that in a minute. I've just never been good at figuring this out. Whoa. That turned the lights off. gonna leave it there and then do a true color video and then have Jeff always available to set my colors for me. Got it. Square table. Looks like the earth from space. A little bit. So I'm just bringing some of the blues down. So it wasn't just a solid chunk of purple back there. All right, I can feel it starting to get warm, so I'm extra, extra on the clock now. I'm going to lay out my white. 
I'm not putting that much white because I don't want it to take over. If you do too much white, it's going to cover everything that you've done so far. And I'm also bringing some of the white down on the sides. And hopefully I can stretch my wave all at once. Not have to come back and do the sides. We'll, we'll see. a platypus heat attachment. I'm using all the way high heat and all the way high airflow. Just going to preheat it a little bit because it is such a thick resin. I need it to kind of move a little bit. tilt it up and as soon as it starts moving really well I'm going to move on to the next section see that little mushroom cloud happening in the far right side that's from me not preheating the resin enough and it's really hot resin hitting really thick cold resin. Let's just help that right along. And just stretch those waves out because why not? Oh, I can't wait to show you guys this for real. So I'm going to tilt this bit off the side and I can't do that yet because everything else is going to go with it so I have to be patient which is difficult let's say. Let's check the flyover cam. Because I think it'll get me a better, yeah, the colors are more accurate on here for sure. We're not going to focus. We never do. It's fine. Anyways, give me a moment and we're going to tilt and do a little bit here and we're going to add the the sand. Looks like I lost a fair amount of the under painting, but that's okay. Worth it if it looks good in the end. All right, I'm just gonna do a torch and tilt on this side so I can kind of control how fast it moves what areas move. I'm just trying to stretch that wave over a little bit. That looks good. And I don't really mind this shift. I do a little bit mind that this is so in the center. So I'm going to stretch some of these areas down. Notice how only really the areas where I'm touching with the heat gun is really, really moving. And that is by design so that I can control what's moving and where. 
So if you can hold your wrist over your piece and it's, you can feel some temperature, some heat a little bit, then give it a second. Let it rest a little bit before trying to do this because you need all the other areas to be kind of chilled out and set where they are. I hope that makes sense. stretch this bit this way but can't do that yet because all this will move so I can still feel some heat right here so I'm gonna wait and in a moment I'm gonna stretch this this way is there anything I could do to cover my painted brick fireplace um, I know a lot of people will do, I don't know if it's MDF, I think it's MDF, but they'll resin on it and then silicone them to things. I don't know, don't quote me on that being okay around a fireplace, but I would look into that. I think a lot of people do that. Not on the inside of a fireplace, but like the outside hearth area. Oh yeah, I a lot of things in our place are resin coated. All right, there's not that much heat coming off, so I know once I start to tilt it around, it's not going to move really. It hasn't really moved. Look at that beautiful like silvery shine that comes up. That is from the Lorraine. See how it turns like from deep moody to that beautiful. I don't know, abalone-esque glow. All right. So now I have it tilted down this side. We're just gonna heat these bits. I need to adjust my hold. Okay. This way we can control what moves and we can get a full coverage or something closer to full coverage for this round. There we go. Ooh, I really love this. Oh, I forgot I had to do sand. Oh my goodness. Okay, where is it? Here it is. Okay. <gasps> It's not solid yet, so that's good. The reason why I'm doing this sand at this point, if you weren't here yesterday, is because I really want my white to grab um, to the, oh my goodness, words to the dry part of the canvas and then it'll stretch that way. If I were to put the white just on top of resin, it's just gonna roll along with it. So it's not gonna hold on right here and stretch that way, which was the entire thing that I wanted. So that is why I don't have this down first. And if the white mixes with the pink, then I'm gonna have a baby pink wave instead of a true white wave, which is fine if you want a baby pink wave. Totally, perfectly fine. But for me, I didn't want that. I'm gonna edge up my wave a little bit with white so I'm not pushing this all the way up to the edge. Now I'm just giving kind of a little bit of texture since this is going to cure within the next few minutes anyways. This texture will stay. Which, I love that. Okay.
goodness. Having cup problems. Okay. Now I need a little bit of white and we'll be done with this piece. I, feel, I think it looks super rad. I was concerned when I first put the, um, the purple down, the Aber Aberdeen. One day I'll figure it out. Um, it wasn't really reading like I wanted it to, but ultimately once the colors started mixing together, it really turned into a piece that I'm pretty pumped about, if we're honest. So what do you guys think? Would you have gone with the purple? Not a big fan of the purple. I'm just popping the bubbles in the sand area. I do not want to thin it out at all, so I'm not applying that much heat to that area. I'm just hitting the wave so that my whites will catch up with what we already have out there. put too much heat on your sandy area it will liquefy and you don't want that trust me you don't want that so let me just take a true color video so I don't forget This is the piece from today's live. We did a pink sand, blue, turquoise, and purple ocean that turned out so super cool. Look at those cells. Can you just look at these? They're crazy. They're huge. They're huge mugis. And that is because we used some base cell paste from Color Fashion. And that is how I got these large cells that look so amazing. Check out the video from today's live to see the full process. And I'm still working on my video skills, so we're working on that. Don't judge me. And um, get these paints from artisttilldeath.com. They'll be listed um, under the video from today's live. Bye. So... Still can't tell. I wanted wanted this to show you, but it's not working. What are you gonna do? I'll be uploading that. Wonder if I pick this up, if you guys can see. Of course, it's probably not gonna focus. But they're stunning. They're huge. And they're going to have to live over here because there's something in every part of my dust-free zone. So check out the short that I'm about to post. Um, if you're interested in any of these colors, they are down in the description box below this video. And um, purchasing from a small business like mine is makes a huge difference. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, which color is which? Cat. Can you use colored sand and then flood coat? You can use colored sand. I would definitely use synthetic sand because those are like plastic and they won't um, change color. Like real sand typically changes color. Even if it's white, it'll turn gray when it gets wet with resin. You know what I mean? What's up, Evelyn? Yeah, maybe a different color for the sand. I think it would have been better if I used that cream deluxe that I used yesterday, but live and learn. Um, the sand is very pink, but it's a little bit less pink IRL, um, but it is a little bit too pink for sure. 
Um, you sent me an email about cutouts. I will get to that today. The pink mauve color. The purple. This is aubergine. And the sand is... It's a pink champagne color that someone sent me as a tester and it was closed, so I grabbed it. Um, it's very close to... Um, pink gold shimmer from Color Obsession. My pleasure, Bonnie. So anyways, um, yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing day. If anyone has any requests for me to do color combos or a certain design um, that you've seen and need you know, sometimes you see someone do something and sometimes, not always, people don't want to share their te techniques. Um, and so a lot of times people will send me those videos and ask me how they did it, which I don't know. But then I can do a video on how I would do whatever it is that someone sent me a question of, about. And so if you guys have something like that, make sure to tag me and stuff as well. Um, and join our Facebook group, ATD's Poor People, where poor people like us um, meet and talk about art stuff. But anyways, um, I hope you guys have an amazing day. I will see you guys at 6 p.m. tomorrow. But till then, be kind to one another because you never know what someone's going through. And always remember that we do the test so you don't have to. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Peace.